Welcome back, everybody. Today, I want to talk about a new base model. Well, relatively new. Apparently, it came out in the last two weeks. So while we were messing around with all the stuff we've been doing, this has been happening in the background. It looks like only 34,000 downloads, which seems a little strange. There must be another mirror somewhere because that's a little bit low. This is actually a really cool model. Um, it renders Chinese and English characters. You can read all about it on the Hugging Face space just here. Okay. Um, but really what I want to do is I want to help you get set up with using it because I think it's got some cool potential. It's got IP adapter, one control net for line art. As far as I know, this is all I've tested it with. Um, and it does text to image and image to image. So let's jump into setting it up. So first of all, you're going to grab the workflow pack, coder pack. That's the one I'm going to be using for all my colors workflows. It's going to be similar to the trio pack because trio, the triple latent doesn't work. So essentially this is going to be sort of the same features, but built out for colors. So once you've downloaded the pack, um, you're going to need to install a bunch of stuff. Now, if we just take a look first at the main page for the wrapper. Okay. So this is another Kijai wrapper. So thank you very much, Mr. Kijai. Um, because we now have this update. You can now load the GLM3 as a safe tensors, which saves a lot on downloading the uh, back end. Um, it's explained here, essentially. This is what you copy from the hugging face mirror. So this is how you would put it in. But what's happened is this has now moved to models slash unit. And then this, you don't need to download anymore because it is this, right? but I believe it still downloads the config files. And also what I did notice was some of the nodes are still looking for the unit in this location. So what I've actually done temporarily until they figure this out is um, just have the same model in two locations, but we're gonna go through that and explain what I mean. So basically the IP adapter requires a different K sampler and then that requires a different model loader. You get it all, but um, that's the main thing. So. First thing you want to do is come over to Kawaii Colors and then download all of the configs, as I've uh, stated. We just go back to this. You can see this is what your, uh, the, co the contents of Model Diffuser's colors. This is all of the files and how they should be named and in what folder they should be. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this model here and we're going to put it in two places. We're going to put it into um, models unit colors, but we're also going to have a copy in diffusers colors unit. And yeah, I know that's going to double up the amount of space that's being used, but it's it's for ease of use while the nodes are loading from two different. I'll show you. We'll get there. So the bottom line is you needed. So I just want to make sure you get all this. Okay. So you're going to download the GLM. So that'll be, I took the 8-bit, but it's up to you what your system requirements, you know. I took the 8-bit, um, and then I've placed that into LLM. Where is it? Models. Let's see if I can get this up on the screen a bit more. There you go. So models, and if I go down to LLM, checkpoints, there it is. Okay. So that one goes in LLM checkpoints, right? And then the next thing you're going to need to do is put this, which is the file from the diffusers. It's that one. Yeah. So that file is going to go into models unit colors, but it's also going to go into models diffusers okay so we've already say we've copied our scheduler config we've copied our text encoder configs and the model in those those files there we've done the unit and then we keep a copy of the diffusion pytorch in this one with the model index okay and then we've still got it in the uh in the unit as well and then that way all the nodes will be able to work properly um once you've done that, you're going to want to get the clip vision. So scrolling down, we've got some more stuff. So we've got IP adapter plus. You want to 
grab IP adapter plus general dot bin and put it in IP adapter colors. The clip vision, as I was saying, goes into uh, clip vision colors. You can get that one here, high torch model. Um, I'm suggesting using a subfolder of colors instead of renaming the files, but you're welcome to just rename the files and put them in the base. I just find that, you know, it starts to get a little bit difficult to remember which one's which if you don't rename them or put them in a folder. So it's up to you. And I put a note about that there. Finally, we're going to grab the Misto line, which is a control net for SDXL, which has been recommended to use. And then with all colors, we're going to be using the SDXL VAE. I'm using SDXL fixed. You can use 0.9 or 1.0. They all work fine. Okay. So with that, you should have your chat GLM3. You should have your unit encoder in both places in the diffusers, which has got the copied structure. Um, and also in the unit, as I say, you should also have your new IP adapter plus general bin inside IP adapter. You should have your clip vision inside clip vision and the con a con you know, this control net is what's been recommended and it does work. So I'm going to experiment with other others, but I wanted to get the basic workflows out to you today. So. Uh, as we've been through this, we had to slightly modify the installation procedure. But then we've actually got it. There's our GLM. Um, and then here is the extension that we've also installed, which handles the IP adapter model and one of the control net models. All right. So this is Comfy UI Colors MZ. You can find both of those in the Comfy UI Manager. So the, this should automatically install when you drop the workflow in. That's not a problem. As long as you've got all of the models in place, as I said, everything will work. All right. So here is the IP adapter plus page. I'm going to put all the links in the description if you want to go and read through about these. All right. And there's the Misto line control net. So that's the Misto AI. And here is where you get the adapter plus. There it is, 1.7 gigabytes. And I think now we can jump into the first workflow. So let's grab uh the image no text to image basic first so starting to use the get set uh stuff which is going to make sense when we make more complicated things so it's just another custom node to install it's pretty cool uh in case you've never used get set it's actually very simple you would simply say uh, set and then you type in, you see it says here VAE, so we'll say VAE. And then I can attach that. And then anything that wants a VAE now, right, will be VAE zero. So you can see I've already done it once. So that answers that question. What happens if you've got more than one? They get a number. And then when I say get easy node, I can choose which VAE I want to bring in. And obviously I've got the other embeds to choose from there. I could choose, oh, I'll go with this one and then into whatever I want. Right. So that's all it is. It's just a way to get rid of all the wires. Okay. But it also makes it a bit easier when you want to connect like two VAEs, for example, in lots of places. Uh, also, you can do it with positive embeddings. It's all kinds of stuff you can do. So anyway, let's get to the actual workflow. So up here, we've got our VAE fixed. Here, we've got our Kawaii colors. All right. Now, this is what I was talking about. See this loader model produces colors underscore model, right? And the thing is that it tries to match this. You can't always drag these into anything, right? Um, <laughs> and so what happens is you end up having to use, if we have a look at their sampler, it takes a colors model and then it colors embeds. So there's no like, you know, it's turning it into an embed of positive and negative and then using that, which is a little bit different from normal workflows. And what you'll see with the IP adapter workflows is they're a bit more traditional in that they have a normal case sampler. However, we do get this EULA discrete scheduler, which we don't normally get. So it's not, you know, I think it's worth having both and not just, you know, going with one or the other. It's worth having both. So this one would be like from the diffusers implementation, I think, from that set of nodes for the actual wrapper set. Um, anyway, let's get into the rest of it. So first change I made was to load GLM rather than download it. We've already got it. So we just load it and it's, there it is, checkpoints, right? 
Uh, there's our VAE. We've got that. Now, this one here, there is a loader for colors, but that is for the other stuff. It doesn't output colors model. So I don't want to overcomplicate things. Keep it nice and simple, right? So looking at the prompt, the line, uh, the pipe seems to make a multi prompt. So if I have this set up right now with number of images per prompt one, which I'm assuming that's basically batch, um, with this being four prompts that are split like this, when I run it, it's going to give me four images, one for each prompt that was separated by the pipe. <coughs> and that's quite a cool behavior, um, which I haven't seen before. Um, I don't know if it's the, just the way that the, that this is working. I don't know. Um, but it's just something interesting. So if you put one prompt in, it'll make one prompt like normal. But if you put a load of prompts separated by pipes, it'll make them all at once, which is quite interesting. As I say, uh, this one is using 25 and five, 25 steps with five CFG. This is all defaults, default prompts that come with it. Right. So let's say we want to have a look at a different seed here because this is just the one it came with. I'll put two on. Let's see how quick it is. Thirty six seconds. That was a cold start. So it's making four images as well. Took nineteen seconds once it's warmed up. Okay. All right. So obviously the double click was to clear the same seed, just so you know why I only got one image there. Um, <laughs> these are actually better than the, uh, <laughs> this does, these, these are pretty cool. Like I said, this is pretty cool. I'm actually quite surprised with the, the, uh, quality that you're getting from this. Okay. So, so like I said, nice and simple. This is the, uh, text to image implementation. So it's just very simply text to image. Really simple. You can have a play around, see if you can find some better settings here. And obviously you can build off of this upscaling and all this good stuff. So we're going to leave this one for now and move on to the image to image workflow. So here it is, image to image basic, right? And as you can see, we have an image of an anime princess or queen, I guess. And we'll say illustration of a woman. I'm now going to say illustration of a queen wearing a black dress in a royal hall. Let's expand it out a bit, you know? And then here we'll say cinematic photograph of an, an aristocratic woman in the uh, Victorian era. All right, let's see what it does with that. Okay, I spelled wearing wrong. There we go. Now, just before we run this, this is exactly the same as the last workflow with the only difference being that now we're doing, doing uh, the load image to VAE encoder and then piping the latent in. That's the only difference. These are pretty much the same workflow. Okay, we've got our loader. VAE is the same and we're using the uh, diffusers unit. Right, so there it is. So if we run this now, I believe it does require another cold start for some reason, I'm not sure. Sometimes it seems to unload and load things on its own. So here we're using the same steps, CFG, everything's the same, but we have a denoise strength of 0.75. And we're using what number of images per prompt one. Okay. All of the images will get saved to a custom location. All right. So here we have our illustration of a queen. The hands have gone a bit weird in this one. And, but otherwise the details are pretty good. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, anyway, it sort of looks a bit like SDXL grade, you know, um, sort of outputs pretty cool um hands have gone a bit weird though uh, it's not something that you can't fix with a control net in paint the hands back 
and then obviously we've done a lot of face fixing so we're all very familiar with the face swapping at this point um but yeah just to sort of there it is and obviously if i was to like you know let's let's just have a little bit of fun here so now let's say uh female astronaut in space detailed stars and nebula background i'm probably prompting this really badly as well i haven't done enough prompt testing to know yet um and th anthropomorphic anthropomorphic queen in fine robes female focus I wonder what it'll do. I never said which which anth anthropomorphic what. <laughs> I wonder what it'll do. So I've just chucked in another two. Hopefully I'm going to get four out this time. Um, and yeah, we're just having fun with one image. Okay, obviously, you know, you can put any image in here. It seems to auto size by the looks of it. But there is a width and height you can specify here. I'm guessing that it's just doing longest dimension. Because obviously, if I put something in which isn't one to one, I think it's just going to make sure that the max, the max length is not more than either of these. But like I said, not enough testing has been done to know for sure. All right. So what did we ask for? We asked for an astronaut, and we asked for a anthropomorphic. Okay. So what do we got? We've got. Uh, sort of like a sci-fi thing going on the anthropomorphic thing did it actually did make the figure a bit better here <laughs> we've got better hands and stuff now actually be very easy to airbrush and fix that that's not a bad starting point um the crown is like the most impressive though like why is the crown so crazy so how about what if i say now anthropomorphic frog queen yeah makes sense right uh hang on let's make our lives easier here how long does it take to do one image just one that's pretty quick so 25 steps yeah wow that is really quick can't wait to get an lcm or something for this thing all right oh my goodness me what is it that 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 is an award-winning frog what the hell okay yeah so anyway this has got loads of potential but bear in mind we're just literally letting there's no there's no controls here it's just straight up image to image with prompts it's very <laughs> i'm surprised it kept so much and then did so much check do you know what i mean like you would expect it to like they're even froggy fingers oh my god so anyway like i said i'm uh pretty hyped about this uh model here showing a lot of potential don't know what the status on training is or anything like that <laughs> but let's move on to the next one because we've got control net to look at next. okay so here we are we're on workflow number three this is coda line art basic version eight so what I do is I basically, whenever I change them, I just put the number up and then I just pack it all up again for you guys. I'm just trying to get everyone hit the ground running. I know a lot of you have probably already used this, but because we've been so focused on all the animation stuff for the last week or so, this kind of just sort of got under the radar for me. So I'm covering it and uh, I'm loving it. So yeah, Misto line is what was recommended by the, uh, the people that did this extension. That extension being, uh, what's it called now? Uh, why is it not telling me what it's called? We already looked at it. It was the second one. So that would be Comfy Colors MZ. So that's how we're getting these workflows running. So what is it? All right. Well, it's basically the exact same thing as before with Control Net. So let's cover the Control Net first because we all know what that is. So we've got a load image which goes into a Canny Edge preprocessor and it's the same one as normal. And then there's a preview of what that is. And then that goes into the apply control net, just like it would on any, any other. And the difference here is we're using a normal case sampler. 
Now, I found that 24.5 DPM2 MSD GPU, this is a good combination. I did a bit of testing with other ones. Still got to test them all, but um, we'll get to that. Not on this video, though. <laughs> so here we are with the recommended from the author. All right, this is pretty much all recommended. I've just sort of organized it so it's got like a bit more of a flow to it. They tend to like compressing everything into these little tile panel things, which is cool. Um, but I like the programming workflow look. So I don't know. I think it's easier to extend on because it's linear. It goes from left to right. And this is the end. This is <laughs> and so if you want to build on this, add more control nets, because I've got a suspicion many sdxl control nets might be a might be might work i don't know i need to test it um but certainly we're just loading an sdxl control net here as far as i can tell um i just put it in the colors folder so if we go and look at the actual um the misto line thing it's listed as sdxl 1.0 um it doesn't say in here you know, it says it's using, it's based on the unit of SDXL1. So I don't know. I've just, you know, just a little theory. We'll, we'll find out, won't we? But the point is, the difference here is it's got a slightly different loader. So we've got this, we've got the minus zone chat GLM3 model loader, which is giving us chat GLM3 model, which goes into there. But also we've got the colors unit loader V2, and that is loading it from the unit folder models unit not from diffusers unit right so anyway when we're picking this one it comes through as a model and then the model can be fed into k sampler because the same they match they're the same type right uh but the other loader can't connect so what that so to get around it and be able to use all of the nodes I just have the model in two places because the only reason it doesn't work is because you have the model in one or the other. And I, I won't be surprised if they change this or have some provision so you can like put it in a different place, probably like a config file you can slap somewhere. So when you've got all the files where I said to put them, you'll be good. So coming back down here, what we've got is we've got a control net, which is being applied just the same as any other SD uh, workflow got an empty latent image okay because this is a text to image workflow even though it has the control net um and then we do our prompt positive negative okay obviously everything goes into the k sampler and then the vae will decode it there you go simple as let's give it a go and i believe that this one came out a bit bad and i think the reason is probably because she's facing away but let's just find out and because the prompt is too simplistic certainly we have the con we have the line art let's see what it does with it and yeah as i remember it needs something something needs something here but this is as it was provided, okay? So all I've done is cleaned up the basic workflow and put it into the pack so it's all together, and then I give you the instruction on how to install it. I haven't changed the basics, so I don't know if this is the result of too much denoise or if the control net is too strong. Um, I, I don't really know. And, and like I said, I'm going to be doing more research on that tonight and tomorrow, hopefully to push a new pack if we find that we can get something working. All right. But I'm not too bothered about this lackluster result. Because if you notice, it's not even following the, uh, you know, it's not even following this at all. Uh, I mean, you might say it's cropped. Maybe it cropped. Do you know what? Let's try and find some kind of square image. Oh, we've got a rock island there. All right, let's change it so it says cinematic photo of a house on a rocky island all right let's try that let's give it another shake you know give it another shake oh and we've also got it on incorrect incorrect let's match it up it should only just squish but cue another one okay do you know what it didn't do too badly when i did a better job myself see when i actually put a bit more work into it it was actually okay but when we look at it yeah, it's a bit 
like. I wonder if it's just too strong. It's often SDXL control nets are very strong. So let's just turn it down. And that is actually, that is better. The composition matches. It's done a lot of stuff though. Then I guess it's interpreted the cloud as hill. Because remember, there's no depth here. But then again, it didn't pick up anything up there. So why would it turn that into a hill? Makes you wonder. So why don't we just uh, put it on the old random and then we can have uh, four. Should be able to fit. Be careful with your v with batch size, by the way, guys. Normally I would always just keep it on one and just queue four images. But I fancy just getting four of them here because this seems to be able to do that. Or it did in the text to image and the image to image, you know, with the pipes. So. Okay, so what have we got? We've got the image that we got the first time, which is okay. I'm going this way. That's a much better image. Actually, very good. Uh, see, this is an interesting one because, like, you can make your complaints about the texturing and stuff, but the consistency and the sharpness is on point. So, ooh, 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 ooh. so I think this one's going to be lots of fun. This, uh, this model, just got to see what it can do. Uh, it doesn't look like there's many people messing around with it at the moment, so. Lots of room for people to explore and make discoveries. Uh, but anyway, we got one more workflow. So this is the last one, IPA basic. So let's get to it. And we're back with APA, IPA basic. So this one here is the Coda IP adapter basic workflow. And as you can see, look how simple it is. This is one of the reasons why I've been trying to build with this get set thing. Because I know it doesn't seem like it's worth it, but... Uh, let me let me see. It's, it's, for example, like say I wanted to send the prompt and the seat that 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 I wanted to send those, right? I could just set and then alt click, and then I could type conditioning if I can spell conditioning. Put that in there, right? Conditioning. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll do the same thing here. Conditioning. Okay, and drop that in there. Now, I haven't learned if I can rename them yet. I'm pretty sure you can, but I haven't experimented with that myself. Um, but basically, <laughs> I could then, even if I didn't use it here, say I wanted the lines there. Well, later on, I don't have to drag them all over the shop. I can just pull in, get, set, con uh, uh, I can just pull in get conditioning for positive and get conditioning zero for negative. It's just so useful. And like I said, it's something nice. Um, so if I wanted to have something else down here, you can even have a uh, set image and then get image. All right. So then you can chain things like that, which is kind, kind of cool. So anyway, if you are familiar with my trio pack where we did our big look at IP adapter plus when it came out, um, for SDXL, then you'll be familiar with the IP adapter advanced node because we did a whole workflow pack on these in the Trio collection. So it's going to be the same exact approach to applying the control net, all right, just using colors. So this is awesome. You probably find that a lot of your favorite SDXL uh, workflows might just require a small modification, probably in the, uh, you know, the back end models, loading in the prompt. But everything else is pretty much going to be the same. So, you know, think about that. Uh, so let's get a different image up here because we've got like, we've had loads of the same. We keep doing the same ones over and over again. Uh, I want to do a, let's do a Spider-Man. Should be easy, right? Of a man wearing a Spider-Man cosplay. It's not the real Spider-Man, guys. Please don't come to my house and shoot me. All right. So we're going to throw one photo of El Spiderino. And 
with a prompt of cinematic photograph of a man wearing a Spider-Man cosplay. And let's see what it does. Um, obviously, just to go over what we actually have here, we've got one, which is probably too high. We've got linear concat. We're doing the full range with V. Um, we're using the clip vision. And there you go. We've already gone over everything else. The settings are the same with less steps here, 20. One denoise. And then we end up with this. It's interesting. That is interesting. It's very close. Very close. And the thing is, I could get a... Uh, I could uh, create a Tom Holland face model and just do a quick swap arena. Um, you know, and then it's going to look much better. The background, so that means we're pretty much judging it on the background. Like, the physiognomy is okay. Might have an extra knee. Uh, let's just... Do another one and see how what all the variation is like. Because this is the last workflow in the pack. We're going to be coming back to this, obviously, with things like upscaling and all that other stuff that we normally cover. More IP adapter options, I don't doubt. Um, okay, that's interesting. I mean, it is consistently producing the same thing over and over. It is just giving us nice variations of. The photo. Oh, oh no. But it does seem to have a bit of trouble with feet. But like I said, uh, this is still like a very bare bones implementation. So this is more of a get you up and running, I guess. Um, and I think here what I've done is I've taken a prompt. The prompt I used to generate the knights in the puppet videos. So if we take a look at that prompt real quick. A knight, short red hair, realistic, female focus, full body, standing, arms outstretched, ornate gold plate, armor suit, baroque chest plate, red cape, diffused light, black, uh, plain black walls, right? Okay, so that's a pretty good prompt, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that prompt and put it into my IP adapter, right? And then we're going to do a couple of easy tricks. Um, so obviously we're going to want to do a make make batch do you know what make image batch there you go and we're going to put the image batch into the image on the ip adapter right and then let's just reduce this a bit and let's get i don't know four and we're going to go one we're going to go two we're going to go three uh oh it's not doing it. <laughs> I'm smart. There we go. Three and finally four, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to go save image. Ah, we've already done that. We've already done that bit. See, I'm getting ahead of myself, right? If I go over here and go to my data downloads folder, there we go. So I can just go one. Two, three, four. Now, because I generated all of these off of the prompt, which I'm going to use, it's the closest match you're going to get. Now, I generated these in the text to image. So these were generated by this model. So we're feeding consistent images of a character with its prompt back into ip uh, adapter and the only thing that i would do here is i would do a um uh, ip adapt whoops adapter ip adapter there's something in here that i need a -do -do -do, a -do -do -do. vision enhancer mm, maybe he changed the name of it There's a pro, like a preprocessor, I guess. Am I just missing it? I'm guessing it must be that. No, it's not that. Hmm. There's something which I have to do to this to shuffle it. Give me a sec. Okay, this is definitely the right one. <laughs> So this one here is shuffle, and we're going to do a uh, shuffle with a strength 
Uh, let's put a preview in so we can see what it does. So all I'm doing here is I'm giving it more images to work with before it does the generation again. Um, and then I'm doing a negative noise trick, which is recommended by the IP adapter, not author. I think I got that right. I think I got that right. <laughs> we'll soon find out. So we should get a good image. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's a good image, right? Now, the only thing I might do is I might do, hang on, have I done it on this one already? No. So the only thing I might do is I might try running it through, uh, for example, a reactor. So we could put it through various face swappings, yeah? Uh, but what I'll do is just to, to speed up the video here, I'll just literally do the reactor restore face. This is something I want to show you. So if I just do reactor restore face like that, you're not really going to be able to see it very well because of the compression on the video. So I'm going to use RG3's um, compare if I can find it. RG3. Uh, compare. Image is it image compare? Is that what they called it? Image. In, image compare. -er. That's why I couldn't find it. So obviously the A will be the uh, image that's just coming out of the machine there, and then the B is going to be the restored face. Okay, so then we don't have to sort of like strain our eyes trying to figure out what the heck. Uh, Say IPA coder resto, just so I've got an idea of which image is which. And then what we'll do is we'll just minimize these for a second and uh, pull that one out and off it goes. And then we'll see what we get because what we should get is a window slider. Okay. So now as you can see, See this? Nothing's happening, right? Yeah? Because we didn't actually load it. I've done that on purpose, just to sort of make you try things. <laughs> GFP, uh, GFP GAN 1.4. All right. Now, you can get fine-tuned versions of those, by the way, if you hunt them down. Uh, but I tried to just use what anyone can get. So here we have, as you can see... A, B, A, B. But let's just check I've got that the right way around because sometimes I do mess it up. Have we got freckles? I think we have. I think we have got freckles on the original. So does that mean the restorer took them away? Yeah, it did. So actually, that is the original output and that is using GFP GAN to clean it up. All right? see if we can get in it's difficult because it'll pixelate now you have lost some detail actually with gfp gan it is cleaner but you've lost detail there was more detail in the original render okay so you know re restoring with gfp gan is basically like a uh, airbrushing someone's face it's, it's you don't get that so let's try it with code former next right So let's take a look and see which one it is. So have we got, okay, so there's like two freckles there. I'm trying to find something that I can tell. Okay, so yeah, there we go. The freckles are gone again. So let's go into the face. Do you know what the funny thing is? The funny thing is the ear is sharper. No buck tooth in the original. Better eyes much more realistic skin around the eyes. I mean, this bit here is a bit weird, but it does look better in the original. So the funny thing is a lot of these face restorers are kind of outdated. This is sort of like you're getting better results 
out the box. It'd be interesting to see what happens when we apply uh, one of my faces to it. So let's just do that really quick. So we'll do uh, another reactor. Come on. Reactor face swap. And we'll just do a simple one. So we'll load a face model. Because I've already got them. And we'll load Thora, who is my female face model. And we've got it with the code format. In fact, we'll, again, we'll do it with none first. And then we'll disable this because I want to use this one instead. And we'll say swap. Okay, sometimes you might put the character name for the face that you're using, but it's completely up to you how you organize your stoof. All right, so there it is. And this will be really easy, I think, because once you're actually changing a face, it's much easier to see what's going on. So off we go. So we're not going to be using a face restore model, just the in swapper. There's our original. It's got some really interesting soft blurring in this going on, which helps with depth, I think. Uh, okay. Yeah, look at that. It's completely different. You can tell. All right. So, wah, looks a little ghoulish, actually. Looks a little ghoulish. Like the, the discoloration is sort of tried to match the neck, and the pink is gone. Um, I would also say that that face is really low, low res. Look at the pixels. All right. So let's now try doing it with, because they do say you've got to use one of these, right? But I just wanted to show you the difference. So we're going to make another pose because we're on random seed. It's very consistently giving me the same character though, which is nice. It's sort of actually giving me a character just from the prompt and the IP adapter. Um, so again, see, we've lost all of those cool face to face, all them face details in the skin and the shadow and the paws, all that stuff's gone, but you do get your character. Now, what I wonder is what would happen because this character is trained on uh, SDXL outputs, not a real face. So what happens if we train our reactor model so we do our face training with uh, colors. Would we get a better face swap? I think we probably will. So these are all things I'm going to be looking into and hopefully answering. There's one more thing, because obviously, as I've already showed you, GFP GAN is pretty old now. Code former is still not as good quality as what we're getting out of this native. Um, so let's see what we get with code former. Okay, again, it's better, but look at the crispness of the line on the face. It's so good. And then when you look at this, you can really see, you can really see where, where it's not as good. Look at that line. I mean, it's kind of jagged in places. However, that is my character. So a couple of things which I'm going to be doing, retraining new faces, but generating them with colors. And then seeing how that works, because I think that might actually give us a boost, might actually make Reactor a bit better. Because what I know that when I use a, a photograph, so if I have an actual person, I've got lots of pictures of like myself, take pictures of myself, right? That model looks great. It doesn't have these problems. And I think these problems are because it was an AI generated face in the first place, right? And obviously AI generated faces a year ago have come away, come a little bit. <laughs> come along a little bit so that'll be something i'll be looking into um but i just thought we'd sit on this and just do a couple of things this is typically what i would do i would start with a base workflow and then i would start chucking new things in plugging them in adding a few things tweaking a few things see what works um and then it's all stored in the image so if i like make a mistake i can just drag this one in and go back 
Um, but I hope that makes sense. Maybe a couple of you weren't with us when we did all this stuff. Um, so like I said, there'll be some more workflows coming in the version two of this pack, but I've got to confirm everything works first. So with that, thank you very much. Make sure to uh, give us a rating on the Civit AI. It does help. And thanks for watching. See you next time. So memberships are here. I've added donator and member. The donator membership is just a, you want to support the channel, help us grow. Member, you're going to get some exclusive video access. So some of the deep dive education stuff I've been doing, there'll be more of that. Um, there's always going to be the same content on the channel that we've always had, but this allows me to do some live shows in future. So look out for the upcoming date and uh, check out the join now button for more information. Back to the video.